Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a super fun video for you guys. Today I'm going to be doing a Minecraft simple barn tutorial. So I've had a few questions about if I could do a barn tutorial on how I build my barns. So that is what I'm going to be doing for you guys today. This is just going to be a very simple barn. This is how I build most of my barns because I don't like doing the super intricate barns. They look really cool, but they are very difficult to build. So I like to do my simple barns. What you're going to need for this um, barn build is you're going to need a block for your columns. So I like to use oak logs or any type of natural block I like to use as the pillars. It just adds an, a little bit of extra detail. Um, you're going to need um, cobblestone or stone. You can use any um, block for the base of your barn. I like to use a type of stone and cobblestone is my favorite to use. And then you're going to need your main building block for the barn. I am recently really enjoyed using the white concrete. I think it looks super simple, super modern. Um, and I just like that it brightens the barn up a little bit more. But I used to always use um, either oak planks or birch planks. I still do like to use the planks. I just feel like using the concrete makes it look cleaner. But if you're going to look, or if you're aiming for like a more rustic vibe for the barn, I definitely recommend oak planks or birch planks, and you can even use spruce planks or acacia. It doesn't matter. Um, these are just the blocks that I like to use. And then obviously you're going to need a type of glass, whether it be a glass block or a glass pane. Um, and it can be colored block, it can be colored pane. Um, no preference at all. I like to use the blocks. I just think it, think it looks a little bit better in my opinion. Um, but for the barn, I like to start out with the barn with the archway. I love doing archways. I think it f makes the barn feel more open. Um, for my archways, I typically do, I do a bunch of different types of archways. Um, the main one that I use is this one. You're going to go up, I did not mean to do that. You're going to go up like this, so you're going to have three blocks, and then you're just going to pretty much tower it up to a point. And then you're also going to do it on the same exact side. I did that too far, I think. And you're just going to tower it up. Now I did it too close. You always have to kind of play with it. Um, my rule of thumb is you typically need five blocks in between um, the pillars of the archway. And then this is what your archway is going to look like. You can do multiple different types of archways. Um, you don't need it to like go up to the point like this. Wow, okay. You don't need it to go up to the point. If you don't like that, you can always do... Um, the flatter one like this. Um, I typically like to do the point because it makes it feel a little bit bigger and it makes the barn feel a little bit bigger. But you can definitely do this or you can do um, the original way that I had it with the point. Like so. And then this is the one I've been doing more recently um, for some of my barns. But I think for today I'm going to switch it up a little bit and do the flat like this. I think it actually looks pretty good like that. And then the next step is you're going to take your cobblestone or your stone block, whatever you want to use as the base of your barn. And you're just going to start building out. So I always like to leave an extra little gap before. You don't want the stalls to be right up next to the archway. So I like to take it back a bit, and I do two blocks. So I'll have the archway column, I'll have one stone block, and then I can start building the stall out. And I usually do um, two, and then I save a space for the gate or entrance door, whatever. And then I'll do two more stone blocks, and then this is where I go in and will put my columns. Like so. So my stables are usually um, 
five blocks by six blocks. So it'll be five blocks in the stall. So one, two, three, four, five. So it'll be five blocks this way and then it'll be six blocks this way and it'll line up perfectly. And then this is your very first stable. Now I like to usually add like runs out to a out to like the outside from my stall because I feel like it also makes it more open and then the horses have more space for them to wander. So you are more than welcome to do a run if you would so like. For this video, I'm not going to. I'm just going to be doing a basic barn. But for my runs, I typically do um, nine blocks long with the six blocks wide. It'll pretty much be the same width of the stall, just a little bit longer this way. And then you will do the exact same on the other side of the barn. And it'll just keep going. You can have however many stalls you want in this barn. Um, it is entirely up to you. And I always like to do the base of the barn to start out just so I can get like a feel for how I want the layout to be of the barn. And then once I have like the base of the barn started, I kind of know what my barn is going to look like and I know the layout of the barn and how I want it to be built. So I can most definitely um, start building it right now if I really wanted to. But in case I want to make any changes, that's why I just do the base first because then it's easier to make changes. And then you can just keep on adding however many stalls you want. And I've been doing this type of barn for years now. Um, and it's super easy. It's super quick. It doesn't take too much time. Um, I've been doing it on the PC. I've been doing it on my phone before I had a PC. Um, so... I've been doing it for a very long time. And I've definitely done more intricate barns, but I always stick to the kind of simple, the simplicity of this type of barn just because it's easier to build, quicker to build, and it still looks nice too. Alright, I think I'm going to do a six stall barn for this tutorial. I normally would make them pretty big, but I think a six stall barn is a good start. Um, for like a beginner, it is a good start. And you can obviously make the stalls bigger if you would like. I just like doing the five blocks by six blocks. I think it's a perfect size for a horse. Um, at least for a vanilla horse, it is the perfect size. Uh, if you have like a mod that makes the horses bigger, it might be a little bit small, but I think it would still work. So now that we have however many stalls we want, we're going to go ahead and mirror the archway that we have at the front of the barn. And I'm actually going to take these last pillars down because I don't want them here like this. Because we're going to make it the base of the barn like we did at the front. So three, then you're going to go out one, and then you're going to go up three blocks. And I always like to make sure the wood is facing upright and not sideways because I think it looks better. And then now you have your archway. So now if you like the layout of the barn, which I am perfectly fine with this layout, it's going to look like this um, from the top, depending on how big you choose to have your barn. Now we're going to go in with our main building block, which is, in my case, the white concrete. Um, and this just makes it look a little bit more modern. So I like to do, the archways can be a little confusing at times. 
I like to just start going up by three, like so. And then depending on the archway and the type of archway you do, you can fill it in like so, um, and that way your roof can just start clean. Sometimes if you have a bigger archway, it's going to be more intricate and you're going to have to figure out a way to build around that extra point, which is why for this tutorial I decided to do three blocks flat instead of the extra tower part at the top. And it's going to look like this. Um, then for the stalls, I like to build it out once like this. And then I will pretty much make a border with the white concrete. And this is where I'm going to be putting my glass. And I like to use um, as much glass as possible on a barn to add the natural light effect to the barn. And then we're going to go ahead and do the same to this side of the barn as well. And there's a wild horse. Yay. It's a very pretty horse. Oh, there's two horses. It's a very pretty horse. Anyways, sidetracked. So it's going to look like this. Of course, you can change the size of the windows if you want. Um, you can use glass panes instead of glass blocks. You can use colored glass you can do whatever you want I just like the simplicity look of this and it's still realistic and modern so for the stalls you can kind of play around with it um, and you can do different fronts of the stalls and um, you can do different stall dividers and stuff like that so I'm just going to build a very simple stall divider or stall front like this uh, I like to keep the stall front very simple um, I also don't like it when the stalls go all the way up to the top. I feel like it makes it look more closed off. So you can tell by like most of my barns that I do build, I like to have like an open concept of the barn. I think it looks way better and way, way more open because if you did it closed all the time, it would just look really closed off and small. And then for the back, you're just going to build a large window. Obviously, you can change the side of the window, or if you're doing a grass run, um, you can change it up as well. And then for the stall divider, I like to go up a block so that the horses ne can't necessarily see each other, but it also makes it realistic a little bit. And then I like to go up a little bit to match the same height as the stall front. Um, and in this case, you can add whatever else you want. You can add fencing to the stalls if you would really like. I do like to use the um, oak fencing a lot in my barns, and you can just make it the divider a little bit more um, closed off if you might, and it still keeps it a little bit more open. So you can definitely do a stall front like this. And then, obviously, you need to fill in your window. And this is going to be your stall. This is what your stall is going to end up looking like. And you can change anything. This is just a simple tutorial of how I like to build my barns. And you can change whatever you want with it. And then you're just going to mimic that stall with all the other stalls. And it's going to look really, really good at the end. And there's your stall number two. And these are also super quick and easy to build um, since it is simple. So if you are like in a hurry to build a barn or you have like a wild horse that you caught and you need to hurry up and get it a home, you can definitely do this barn. Um, because it's super quick. And then we're going to mirror the back of the barn to look like the front of the barn so that it is somewhat symmetrical looking. 
So there is one side of the barn finished, um, and then you're going to go ahead and do the other side of the barn as well. And we're going to go in with our glass. And it's pretty just straightforward for the most part. It does get a little bit boring over time but I promise it'll be worth it in the end. Obviously, it will take longer the bigger your barn is, but also the bigger your barn is, the more ponies you can fit, which is so exciting. Alright, so now that our stalls are all finished and you have a layout of what your barn is going to look like, this is when I like to start doing the roof. So you can use any block you would like for the roof. In this case, since I'm using mostly oak fencing and like oak blocks, I'm going to be doing oak planks for the roof. And then I also like to add a little bit of detail, so I will go in with the with a different color wood slab and then I will go in with that same slab of the color roof that you are building and I will explain why I do this in a little bit um, because you will see why So this one shouldn't take too long since it is a smaller barn. Usually roofs can get pretty boring just because it's like you're building the same block at the same level um, for like multiple minutes, which can be a little bit boring. Um, but you kind of get used to it over time. Obviously, you have to make sure that you are also providing efficient lighting while you're building the roof as well so that you don't have bats spawning in your barn because I always end up having bats spawn in my barn which is really annoying and you don't want that and I will also show you guys what lighting I prefer to use in my barn I always use two different types of lighting uh, in my barn depending on what vibe I'm going for in the barn um, and I will show you guys those options as well. Um, and then along with the natural lighting, I also sometimes put windows um, in the roof as well, kind of like a sunroof in a way, to add as much natural lighting as possible. Just because that's how I've always done it and I like how it makes the barn feel. It also makes it feel more open. Uh, a lot of people don't actually do windows on the roof, and I completely understand why. That's just how I've been doing it for years, and I've grown to like it a lot. Um, because it just adds a bunch of lighting to the barn. Oh god. So as you can tell, the barn is getting pretty dark underneath. So this is where I would go in and I would end up adding some lighting, just some not permanent lighting. So I typically just use the torches um, and I usually just place a couple around the barn. So that way um, you don't have bats spawning.
and then you can just continue building Wow, my fingers are not working today as you guys can tell And then it does get pretty dark in here, which is why we have the torches. Um, and this is where I also would like to add some lighting to the roof. So I will typically just break a couple blocks. I like to make it at least a little symmetrical, like so. And see how much more brighter it gets in here. And then you can just go in with glass and um, fill the little holes in. And it already looks so much brighter in here. And then for the rest of the roof, this is alright, but to make it look a little bit cleaner, a little bit better, I typically like to go in with my slabs. So I'm going to be using the birch slabs for this part of the roof. And this hides like any of the imperfections in the barn so like it covers up the um, tops of the archways since it is natural wood And then you are more than welcome to stop here. It already looks a little bit better. But then I like to go in with a different color slab. Not necessarily a different color, but the same color slab that I used for the roof. And then this is when I'm going to add a second, like, tier to the roof. And it's going to make it look so much better, I promise you. I've been doing this for years, and it always makes the barn look amazing. I use this type of roof on literally everything, any houses that I build, any um, barns that I build, any buildings that I build, I typically use this type of roof on because it's cute, first of all, and it's realistic, um, but it's also simple and not super hard to build. And if you're in like survival or whatever, it doesn't usually take a lot of resources either. And now your roof is complete and it looks so much better. It looks more realistic. Um, you can obviously add anything else to the roof that you want. You can add like an extra archway. You can add more dimension to it so it's not as flat. But this is just the simple, quick way that I like to do my barns. And now since you're outside, your exterior is done, you can start working more on the inside. So first of all, I like to start with lighting. So the two different types of lighting that I prefer to use um, is either glowstone or lanterns. So depending on what vibe you're going for, if you're going for a more rustic vibe, you can definitely use the lanterns. If you're not, you can use the glowstone. Um, and then since the glowstone is not necessarily the most attractive thing in the world, you can get a trap door. I like to use the oak trap doors depending on what vibe I'm going for and you can fill in the um you can put it in the columns it works really well with the columns you can do the lanterns I typically like to use with like um oak plank or not an oak plank what are these called fences an oak fencing and it just makes it seem a little bit more cozier in here 
Um, for this barn, I think I am going to go in with the lanterns. If you don't want them to stick out in the aisle, this is where I recommend the glowstone because it does add quite a bit of good lighting, but um, doesn't stick out and protrude from the walls. So now it looks so much better in here. It looks a lot more cozy. I do like to use the lanterns for smaller barns, um, more open barns. Um, obviously it makes it look more cozy in here. Glowstone is the same purpose. It just makes it look a little bit more modern. Um, and then next we're going to go in and build the stalls. So for the stalls, I have like my little method that I kind of use for the stalls and I kind of just use this as a base for every stall that I make. So I like to use sandstone. Um, I think it looks a lot more realistic uh, than the hay. And so I like to use this as like shavings because it's more realistic than the hay, obviously. Um, and then you're gonna go in with your water trough. I just like to use a basic cauldron for the water trough. Um, it looks like a water trough. It acts like a water trough, so I just use it. For the feeder, I like to use the composter. Um, it looks more like a feed bin, um, and so I use that. And then, obviously, to fill the composter, you need seeds of some sort, so you're going to need that as well. Um, and then to add an extra little touch, with the hay bales, I like to use hay bales as a hay net. So um, for the hay nets, I like to use, um, you can use the same color fencing you've been using throughout the barn, but I like to usually use a different color fencing. Right now I've been really liking the cherry fencing. I think it adds a little pop to color to, of your barn, but you can obviously use like the bamboo, you can use the crimson to add like a touch of purple or yellow. You can also use the blue, which I do like to use as well, but I just like the simplicity of the cherry fencing. So next you're going to go in and you're going to fill out the entire stall with sandstone, AKA shavings. Okay, once your stall is completely filled in with shavings, you can then add the um, things a horse needs to live, pretty much. So, for the hay bales, I typically like to put them somewhere in the back, um, just because they are kind of bulky. And you can change the height that you want your hay bale to sit at. Um, I usually like to do it like this, because it kind of keeps it out of the way for the most part, but it's still um, accessible to the horses. And for the water trough and the feeders, I like to put them in the front of the stall in each of the corners. That way you can't really see it if you're just looking into the stall, but you know it's there. And then the horses have the entire back of their stall to snooze, to eat, sleep, and repeat, I guess. And then your hay feeder, or not your hay feeder, your grain feeder will go in the opposite corner and it looks like actual grain which is why I use the composter. So now you have your stall and now you just need the stall doors or the gates or whatever you prefer to use for um, the fronts of your stalls. For this case, I'm just going to be using the um, oak fencing gate um, since I've been using oak throughout the barn. And obviously, if you have a mod, you can change these to um, look more like a stall door, but since um, I'm not currently using a mod on this world except for the realistic horse genetics. Um, we are just going to be using the gates. So this is an easy barn to build for anyone that doesn't have any mods. Uh, it's super cute, super realistic, but without any mods, which is super easy, super fun for people that don't have access to a computer or anything to where you can have a mod. Um, and so I'm going to build the rest of the stalls off camera for you guys, um, and then I will show you guys the finished product. Alright, so the barn is completely finished now. Um, all of the stalls are done, and then the flooring is done as well. For the flooring, I like to use the stone bricks, um, because 
most barns in real life have a concrete flooring. Um, instead of just using the normal gray concrete, I like to use these stone bricks because it adds a little bit of texture to the barn as well instead of it just being a solid gray concrete. Um, and it adds a little bit of extra detail. So I do like to use the stone bricks. I use it in almost every single one of my barns. Um, and now all of your stalls are ready for all of the ponies to live in. Um, they can all live happily together. Um, and then if you wanted to add a little extra detail to the front of the barn, because it might look a little bland, what I like to do is I like to put lanterns on the outside of the barn. Um, you can obviously do whatever you want. You can use flowers, you can use lanterns. I like to use flowers and lanterns. Um, uh, and I like to put them next to the archway. I don't like putting them directly on the archway because I feel it would be too close to the barn entrance. So I do like to put them a little distance away, um, from the archway. And then obviously you can use flowers, you can use bushes. I like to use the, um, azalea leaves, the flowering azalea leaves as little bushes at the front of the barn. Um, and then you can use flowers as well. Um, I really liked using these pink petals recently. I think they add a little bit of extra touch uh, to the barn as well. So I like to put like box bushes under like the windows and then I can put like little flowers around it um, to add some extra detail to the barn as well. And obviously, I like symmetry, so I will do the exact same to this side of the barn. And I just kind of randomly scatter these um, pink petal leaves wherever I feel they are needed. So as you can tell, it already looks so much better outside. You can use, um, like, the, I like using the tall plants as well. So, like, I like using the peonies, I like using the rosebush and the lilacs. They're um, tall, so they add more um, depth to the barn and more detail to the barn. So you can do these literally, like, anywhere, um, and it'll make it look so much better. So that is how I like to build my barns. I hope this tutorial was helpful. I know I've had a couple people ask um, about... Um, doing a barn tutorial and about how I build my barns. So here's how I build most of my barns. This is the simple tutorial. This is the simple looking barn that I like to use. Um, I do occasionally do intricate barns, but I do stick to this um, simple style of barn more frequently just because it's quicker to build, easier to build, and it looks super cute. Um, and obviously you guys can change any blocks. Um, I know not everyone likes the white concrete, so you can change that to be um, oak planks, birch planks. You can do literally anything with this barn. Um, but this is just how I like to build most of my barns. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you guys. And I hope you enjoyed. And I will see you guys all in my next video.